I already knew that Buddy had been elected sheriff. Here we go again. Oh, sheriff, arrest me again. Arrest me again. I've been a very bad girl, and I really need the long arm of the law. Sweet Jehoshaphat, girl. Keep doing that, and you will be in real trouble, little lady. Haven't you always wanted to build a hobbit house? Well, here's how I'm going to do it. Actually, it's a birdhouse facade hobbit house. The front, which I've already cut out, will be made from this sturdy plywood. The roof and walls will be made from this scrap of weather-resistant cedar fence board. I kind of like how weathered this board looks. I think it'll work pretty well. The only thing on this project that will be painted is the circular door. That's the defining characteristic of a hobbit home, and it really needs to stand out. I want this door to actually work, which means cutting a circle in this plywood. The easiest way to do that would be to use a hole saw. A hole saw is basically a drill bit with a saw blade attached. Unfortunately, my largest hole saw isn't quite big enough for what I want, so I'll have to use the jigsaw. Normally when you're cutting a hole with a jigsaw, you have to drill a hole so the saw blade can fit through and you can finish cutting what you need to. I'll be able to skip that step simply by having our circle intersect with the bottom of the board. I'm using plywood because it's strong enough to hold up to the punishment of this jigsaw.
and here we are. Like I said before, I want this door to work. So I bought a T-hinge and a little drawer pull that looks like a doorknob. The birdhouse entrance will be the Hobbit window and I'm going to use the hole saw to cut that. The perch is just a little piece of branch that will be screwed on from the back of this board right below that. These fence board pieces were easy to cut on my chop saw. They'll be screwed in securely with these charming little log pieces to give it a rustic look. To keep the door closed, I've got a very thin you can see that. A very thin magnet that I'm going to screw onto the back of the door. And I'll use half of a magnetic latch on the back side again, just overlapping a little bit to catch the edge of that magnet. Because the hinge and the doorknob don't match perfectly, I just couldn't find a hinge that looked like the doorknob that I really like best. I'm going to go ahead and rub on just a little bit of bronze to give it a similar look.
pieces are twisting just a little bit because it's so uh, so flimsy here. It's not staying perfectly straight and keeping this circle exactly the way it needs to be for the door to open and close. So I'm probably going to put a little sill piece right through here, just a little piece of plywood or something to uh, reinforce this a little bit. All right, so I've got a little piece of extra scrap wood here that will serve nicely.
mount this in place at the base of a hill, just like a hobbit house, I'm going to use a couple of long screws, kind of like tent stakes. So the last thing I need to do to this is drill a couple of holes for the screws to fit through. This project is a wedding gift for our resident trolls. I want them to feel that their home here at Ivy Acres is special. The troll mound compound is about to get a facelift. Hey buddy, it's Brian. How are you two lovebirds doing? I've got a belated wedding present for you and the princess. We could not be doing better, Brian. Wow, what is that you've made? It looks too big to even fit in our house. Before we go any further, I need to explain that there are a couple of things I know already. I know that Buddy and the Princess are getting along great. First, remember that as far as I know, I'm the only human who can see and hear the magical folk around here. Just the other day, I was replanting some trees and I overheard the newlywed trolls. Thank goodness I didn't see them. Now their little voices don't carry that far, so they couldn't have been holed up down in the troll mound compound. They must have been somewhere nearby, just somewhere inconspicuous. Their, their discourse was a little embarrassing. I'm not that good of an actor, so for this, I'm just gonna read their words on camera. Remember, I was digging up and replanting trees at the time. Oh, that's the spot. Yes, deeper, buddy, deeper. You're almost there. Put your back into it. Oh, you're so strong. It's so big. <laughs> Shake them for me, princess. You know how I like it. Maybe I am a pretty good actor. I did keep a straight face while I was digging up and replanting those trees. I wanted to make a very special house front for you guys. One that's worthy of a princess. Here, take a closer look. This is too much, Brian. I don't know any other trolls who have anything close to being this nice. I understand that trolls like to keep a lower profile. Usually your homes are camouflaged so you don't draw attention to yourselves. But that's that's the beauty of this piece. I've designed it to look like a birdhouse, so anyone who might see it will just think it's one of my decorative birdhouses. You've seen the ones I've got out here. I do have plans to make more. In fact, for the 4th of July, I've got a, a patriotic one that I'll be posting. Well, I just love it. Especially those natural log elements. It really feels like home to me. Hold on. Honey, you have to come out here and take a look at this. How darling, it looks just like a hobbit house. It is lovely to meet you. Should I address you as Mrs. Buddy or your Royal Highness? Hey, wait a minute. Are hobbits real? Just call me Mrs. Buddy, or you can refer to me as the princess if you like. Hobbits are real, although I'm pretty sure the only ones left all live in New Zealand. And it's a good thing too. If any of them saw this, they'd probably want to move in and kick us out. 
but this is so small. How could a halfling fit through a door like that? Tolkien and the movie makers got that whole halfling thing wrong. Hobbits actually come in different sizes. Gandalf and the others were actually interacting with a relatively large species of hobbit. Interesting. If any of those New Zealand dwarf hobbits came around, I could probably do something about it for you. You wouldn't stomp on them, would you? No, I'd probably just build them another hobbit house and put it somewhere else for them. One thing I don't understand is why you little folk are always afraid that I'm going to go around stomping on magical creatures. It's nothing personal, Brian. It's just an instinctive fear for us. Way back before we evolved our default invisibility to humans, a lot of us were stomped on. That's just terrible. Hey, buddy, I'm just fine with fairies and trolls and hobbits and whatever else, but you folks seem to know about these kind of things. I'm curious. Are Oompa Loompas real? What are Oompa Loompas? I guess they're kind of like elves, but they work in chocolate factories. As far as I know, Oompa Loompas don't really exist. That is a relief. Those things really give me the creeps for some reason. Willy Wonka isn't real either, Brian. I was wondering, that perch and the bird entrance do you think that might invite birds right into our house? I don't think so, Mrs. Buddy. Birds that would use a birdhouse probably wouldn't choose one so close to the ground. But if it happens, let me know. I'll put a screen mesh over the window for you. That should keep them out. May I just say that you are delightful, Mrs. Buddy. Down to earth easy to talk to. I wasn't quite sure what to expect when I heard you were a princess. She is pretty great, isn't she? Can I pick them or what? Stop, both of you. You're going to make me blush. The only regal affectation I have is my royal wave. I learned it specifically to ride on the floats in the Portland Rose Festival. You participated in the parades? It was fun, even though none of the humans on the route could actually see me. Well, it's their loss. You are a real looker, sweetheart. Brian, be sure to tell Wendy that she has done a fabulous job with the flowers this year. They remind me of my Rose Festival days. I will. She has done a lot of work on the flowers recently. We heard that marigolds have a distinctive smell that help repel mosquitoes and other garden pests. I'll probably be showing more of Wendy's flowers in future videos. Hey buddy, I almost forgot. How'd it go in your election for sheriff? There's a new sheriff in town and you're looking at him. Remember, I did say there were a couple of things I already knew. I already knew that Buddy had been elected sheriff. Here we go again. Oh, Sheriff, arrest me again. Arrest me again. I've been a very bad girl, and I really need the long arm of the law. Sweet Jehoshaphat, girl. Keep doing that, and you will be in real trouble, little lady. Let's go ahead and mount this house front. I'm sure that you two have other things you'd like to get back to. You tell me when it's in position, and then I'll stake it down. What do you think about here, buddy? Maybe a little to the left. Is that a little better? Can you even it up a little? Hold on, I need to get a shovel. Don't worry, I'll be careful.
Ooh, that's it. Right there. Before you go, Brian, I want to say thank you for being such a good influence on Buddy. That's very nice of you to say, Mrs. Buddy. Did you know him from before? Sure. It's a small kingdom. There's a human tradition where the husband carries the bride over the threshold. Did you want to try that? No. It's not every single time. Just when the two move into their first place together as a couple. That sounds like fun. I'm game if you are, buddy. Very nice. Very nice indeed. I guess good lovin' is all you really need.